Okay guys, it's Friday, April 3rd, and I'm on my front porch. Just got a UPS delivery, and it's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I want to show you what I got. It says, Fragile, do not drop this end up. And, yeah. I watched the guy deliver this. I just happened to be driving up my driveway when he brought it. And I uh, was horrified to see that. I guess he didn't need to take the time to read that. Anyway, this is the delivery for the next project. We'll bring these inside and we'll do an opening. Wow, but I'm, well, the other thing I wanted to show you was, look right here, what is that? Why did, why did that have to happen? How'd that happen? Riding on the truck. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm a little nervous. It says, do not drop delicate, fragile glass. Yeah. I don't know. Don't know about these shipping companies. Okay, guys, let's uh, open this box. This box contains the next uh, project that I'll be working on. It is an Admiral 26R12N model uh, chassis. Uh, this belongs to a friend of mine. And uh, I'm not going to say really that this is going to be a res restoration because the TV was actually operating. It's going to be more of a tune-up, uh, recapping, see if we can get this set working uh, properly in a really nice form. So. What we got, lots of styrofoam, that's good. In a box, um, ice cream. Tube shield. Need that later. Alright, here we go. Okay. That was a nice touch, all the Tube sockets are labeled. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Yep. Looks like a typical Admiral chassis. Pretty straightforward. Should be able to uh, get this going really nice. Um, like I said, the set was, is operational, which, uh, is a little bit scary for me because the only thing I can do is, uh, either make it work really well or, 
the worst option would be uh, that I break it, but I don't think that's the case. These sets are known for operating really, really well, and not too difficult to uh, not too difficult to restore. So anyway, I'll get this cleaned up, completely unpacked, and we'll uh, get this up on the bench later today. And now there is one other box to open and see what's in it. off, but uh, I'm sure I can find that model number somewhere. It's another Admiral set. And I think it made it here okay. It's got a lot of styrofoam on it. All this does, I'll have to blow all that stuff off, but Yeah, it's similar to this other Admiral I have right there. So I can see a, a double restoration going on in the near future. Maybe a two for one restoration project on small Admiral tabletop sets. But the first order of business is getting after this chassis and see if we can get it going. Okay. Okay, guys, got the Admiral chassis up on the bench and repopulated the tubes. And it looks like the chassis made the trip from Ohio to Missouri, where I live, in pretty good shape. Nothing's broke. Uh, the tubes were in that ice cream, packed nicely in that ice cream carton that I showed on um, unboxing. And it uh, looks like the owner has put some little tags or labels of what the tubes are on the chassis, which is a nice little touch. Um, the other neat thing about this chassis is... Um, Kind of like an Atwater Kent radio. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. But Admiral's got the tube type stamped right into the chassis. So that's pretty cool. Like that. And uh, just first glance at the chassis, it looks like it's in really good shape. Um, it's a little bit dirty and that might be a little bit of rust there. Uh, but we can take care of that. High voltage leads in good shape. And what I'm doing now is just taking a look to see if there's anything obvious that I need to take care of before powering this set up. Now, like I said, this set is a working set, so uh, the only thing that I can do while working on this chassis is help it perform better. And one thing I spotted right off the bat is going to the CRT connector. You can see here this brown wire. It's in pretty poor shape. So 
and then it runs underneath the chassis here. So before I do anything, um, I've already taken the cap off and I'll replace that brown wire. That's that's not safe at all. It's it's broken several places. So fix that. The other the other CRT wires are in pretty good shape. And also the wiring going to the yoke appears to be in really, really good shape. So um, the only thing was is the 6J6 tube. I don't know if I missed it. I went back through the box and didn't see it. And I don't think I lost it, but I'm going to look around here. It's not a big deal. I've got another 6J6 tube goes into the tuner and then this tube here it had a 6BA6 in it and it's supposed to have a 6AU6 and this is the 6AU6 that came with it now this tubes usable um, this will be in the um, um, RF I st I, the RF it's an RF tube in the uh, IF stage and this is perfectly acceptable, but I'm probably going to put a, a 6AU6 tube in there. That's what it's called for. And then these two tubes are missing their shields, which is not a problem. I think I've got a couple that will work. They're a little bit of the older style, but yeah, I've got a couple here that will work just fine. Okay, and this is the high voltage cage. You can see down in here. It's pretty dirty, but uh, we'll get that cleaned up. Get that cleaned up and checked real good and make sure that's uh, all buttoned up. There's probably a couple of resistors under here that we need to check. Um, see the little fly back there he's got a lot of dirt on him but we'll get that off a fuse down in there get that cleaned up so what what the plan is on this chassis is um, we're going to power it up as soon as I uh, we're going to look underneath here in a minute and as long as I don't see anything that's really of concern other than you know a thing like this black this or this brown wire get this changed and if there's there's nothing of note that uh, looks way way out of control as far as as doing a baseline power up that's that's what we're going to do now what I'm going to be using is I've got an old speaker here uh, for sound and then uh, we're not going to be able to power it up in this video because I forgot on my test CRT um, the old glue on the cap was just in really really poor shape so I'm going to have to re-glue that and resolder this back on before we can use it in the set and that'll take a good day for that to set up so what I'm going to do is just uh, do this inspection and then we'll take a look at the bottom here in a minute and then uh, at the beginning of next video we'll power it up and see what our baseline is and go from there but the plan is to totally replace all the electrolytics um, I know that they're working, but um, in order to get this set running properly and safely, we need to change those electrolytics out. And then there, I do know there's a can dome resistor, a 15 watt can dome resistor underneath the chassis of this set, and I need to make sure that that's okay. Here's where the speakers connect. And uh, what's interesting about this set, this chassis, Here's the copy of the SAMS. This chassis is also used. Uh, there's a variation of this chassis that's used in one of these combo units. And I was looking through the documentation. And there were some production changes, but it's mainly 
uh, talking about using a color converter which I don't I'm gonna have to read through this again and I think if it used the radio and phonograph I think right here would have been a connection for that and that's that's not there there's a serial number there this is the chassis this chassis is 21b1 and I don't see any other connection so this is a TV only chassis this this panel here goes into the channel tuner to the clunker where you can clean the contacts good which we'll be doing that and there's there's nothing else there's nowhere else where there would be a connection to a radio or phono combo I think I think it would have went right here uh, except this is a TV only set so anyway but let me flip, flip this thing up on its side and let's take a look underneath okay guys now we can get a look underneath the chassis and see here's all of our controls and switches all right channel and fine-tuning control and uh, kind of curious there are a lot of plastic caps in here um, and this set is from 1950 okay so I'm not sure if these are original or not most sets from 1950 I don't I haven't seen these but I haven't seen a date code uh, but there's a there's a bunch of them and they could be replacements I'm not sure but right down in here here's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten there's ten or eleven of them in here and then of course the caps you'd expect to see the old brown wax caps these these will all be gone um, yeah there's quite a few in there and I, I'm I'm not thinking those are replacements I could be wrong but those may have been original here's this can dome resistor that I was talking about that's a 15 watt um, and these are, are a source of trouble spot on these sets so I gotta make sure that that's that's in good shape and then there's also quite a few of these 2 watt resistors um, those can be a source of trouble spot in these sets as well and we'll make sure we check the resistance on those I will be checking all the resistors but uh, those are two of note but overall the chassis looks in pretty good shape I mean other than these caps that are intriguing to me, it doesn't really look like there's been a whole lot of work done on this set. But that could have been somebody that that's come in later on and changed a bunch of caps and put those put those in to keep this set operating for so long. I don't know. Maybe somebody out there can tell me for sure. There's another big resistor series up here. Looks like those are in parallel together. I don't, are they or? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Looks like three resistors and parallel. Not sure if those are all tied together. I can't see real well. Yeah, it looks like they are. It's kind of interesting. I've never seen three resistors tied together like that. Hmm. And of course we'll give the clunker and tuner a good clean over, shine those things up. 
Make sure these transformers are in good shape. Okay. Got the schematic on this set and uh, pretty standard setup. Okay, uses uh, uh, 6J6 and 6BC5 in the tuner. Comes on, output of it comes on over to all these 6U6s that I talked about. It's got three IF stages. The video detector sounds picked off here and goes on up through the sound IF stage. Okay, and then um, the video amp is a 6AC7, and then the sync separator is a 12AU7, and the hor or vertical oscillator is a 6SN7, and the horizontal oscillator is a 6SN7. So Pretty, pretty standard out uh, setup, <clears throat> design, pretty much standard for the time. Not terribly difficult to understand. Here's this connection that I was talking about. If, <clears throat> if you have a uh, the phono radio version, and I know that if we were trying to. Uh, just deal with this TV set and not use the stereo or the uh, the radio and the phonograph. We would have to we'd have to short this out. But I do not see I do not see that connection anywhere. And I would I thought it might be up here if it was here. But like I said, this is a a TV only run, so I don't think that they would even bother with putting that connection in here but it is on the schematic and there is a notation about TV only models but I'm sure not seeing it I'm sure not seeing it anywhere Ink. that is the IF stage and that's a shield for it pretty sure that's what it is so we'll have to look under there and see if there's any caps hiding under there. All right. Okay. So first order of a business is changing that uh, that wire on that uh, CRT cap, and then uh, getting this test CRT back in order, getting it connected up, and. Uh, get a baseline on this thing and see where we're at. So when I come back I'll have that CRT ready to go and we'll power it up and then uh, we'll do an evaluation and we'll go from there. But most certainly we, be, we will be recapping this set so um, got quite a bit of work to do. There's quite a few caps in there but not a big deal. may have noticed during the unboxing that there was a surprise gift in that box for me from the owner and I was really shocked to discover that it was this. This is a uh, Symphonic Mini TV operates on batteries and over the air and uh, <laughs> he had showed this in one of his YouTube videos and I had commented that I really, really liked it. He, knew, he knows that I connect, collect um, micro TVs and, and mini TVs. And, uh, well, I sure didn't expect this to be included but uh, in the box, but I really, really like it. And thanks, Don, for sending it to me. thought I'd show you how it works, playing it over the blonder tongue and of course it's not coming across as bright and pretty as, as it really is there we go 
Controls are a little dirty on it. I'll clean those up, but what a cool little TV. Really like that. So again, thanks, Don. You didn't have to do that. You really didn't, but um, I appreciate it, and I'll definitely keep it in the shop with me and watch it when I'm working on TVs. Okay guys, see you next time.